Welcome to Seek Reality with your host, Roberta Grimes. Author and attorney, Roberta Grimes, will explore and illustrate how she, after an extraordinary experience of light in childhood, has discovered channels of communication to the afterlife and how these implications have an effect on our everyday lives. Please welcome the host of Seek Reality, Roberta Grimes. Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm delighted that you could be with us today. A couple of weeks ago, we entertained on Seek Reality the legendary, legendary Dr. Raymond Moody, who actually coined the term near-death experiences, or NDEs, back in 1975 in his seminal book, Life After Life. And after Dr. Moody was here, I received a number of questions about NDEs and, and related things that made me realize we ought to host an expert who could give us the more, much more personal take on this extraordinary kind of event that can only happen. And if you've had an NDE, which Dr. Moody never has had, um, so uh, something like 5% of Americans I read have had a near-death experience. That is more than 15 million people. And I hear from them all the time. I get questions all the time. So I invited my expert friend, Barbara Bartolome. She's the founder and group leader of IAN Santa Barbara in California. I've spoken there a couple of times, I think. She had a near-death experience during a medical procedure in a hospital in 1987. And she was able to validate everything that she saw the doctors doing. But they still would not agree that something extraordinary had happened. And she didn't even know about NDEs at the time. So she kind of put it aside. And then, as she puts it, in 2009, through IANS and the NDERF organizations, she'll, she'll tell us about those, she opened up to her NDE, and she made an amazing life discovery that she will share with us today. She's talked about her experiences all over the place, national TV, radio shows, news articles, podcasts, documentaries, conferences, and seminars, and in front of live audiences, both in the U.S. and in Canada. She's retired now from the University of California at Santa Barbara, and there she was named an unsung heroine for her volunteer work in the community. That is who she is. And in 2004, she was she was named Santa Barbara's Businesswoman of the Year, a woman of many parts. She created and operated a lovely paper art store in downtown Santa Barbara. Barbara is eager to share with us her NDE story and to tell us how it has altered her life in beautiful and amazing ways. You're going to love her. Welcome, Barbara. I'm so glad you're with us today. Hello, Roberta, and your whole wonderful audience. I'm so happy to be here. So let's talk first about this experience you had. You were very young at the time, right? Well, um, my actually, I was 31 years old when I had the one that I remember, but uh, it was through the IANS organization that and PMH Atwater, who's a researcher on near-death experiences, that I discovered that my family had not told me about a death situation that had occurred for me when I was 18 months old. So I didn't find out about that until I was about 55 years old. But oh, I wow. had my, my second one at age 31, and I remember every moment of that. So tell us about that. Now, tell us what happened. Well, I was, as you said, in a hospital, and I was having a myelogram where they inject iodine dye into my spinal cord. They were checking to see when I blew the disc out of my L5 S1 Ooh. area of my lower back, oh. um, whether I would chipped my spinal cord. So huh. they were injecting dye, and they accidentally tipped the table the wrong way so that my head was lowered below my, my body, and the dye flowed into my brain, and I died on the x-ray table. Wow. Wow. So what experience did you have when you left your body? Yeah, I, I literally uh, was panicked in my body one second, did not realize I was going to die. I thought I was going to faint. It was, I was starting to hyperventilate and my eyes were rolling to the back of my head and, and I was going out of control and, and I was scared. And the next second when I died, I was up on the ceiling above my body, looking down at my body and everyone in the room, and I was extremely calm, and I looked down and said, huh, 
if I'm up here and my body is down there and that man is calling code blue, I think I just died. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Yeah. What was your first clue, right? <laughs> astonishing, yes. I'd never, you know, I'd, I'd never expected it. And I hadn't really thought about death by the time I was 31. And no. I'd never heard of an NDE. And so I had no idea what was going on. Um, there was a presence next to me on the ceiling um, that I felt immediately, and it felt very eternal and very loving, very accepting, just huge. And I, I would, in my heart, I would call it God. And so, you know, for anyone, it could be whoever they choose to call it. But for me, it felt like God was next to me, and I began to talk to the being, and I said, I would really like to go back into my life. I have my five-month-old daughter and my oh. eight-year-old son, and I need to go return. They were, they would be in a very bad situation if I left because I was married to someone who was very abusive, and oh. um, I would have been leaving them in an abusive situation without pre protection. And so I was asking to go back to protect them, but I also, from the minute I got out of my body, I knew what my life purpose was, immediately was shown that I had this specific life purpose, and I asked also to go back to complete my life purpose. And I realized as you know, time went by, and it's now 31 years after that NDE, um, I realized I'm completing my life purpose right now in my talks about my near-death experiences and my work with uh, teaching and traveling and speaking about near-death experiences. It is my purpose. I was supposed to do that. Well, what did they tell you your purpose was? Did they say it would be education? What were the well? How did they put it, it? It was interesting because when I was up on the ceiling, it was just this. All of a sudden, it was just this knowing. It wasn't the being telling me it. It was just all of a sudden I knew I hadn't done something. I knew that I was supposed to complete this in my life. And when I got into my back into my body, when they resuscitated me. That what what it was was erased from my knowledge. It was I knew that I'd had a purpose, but then yes. I didn't know what it was. Oh, you have no idea how common. Well, you probably do, but I, over and over again, you see that when you read a lot of near death experiences. Exactly. I knew everything, and then I got back in my body and I forgot it all. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I got back in my body, the doctors. Uh, uh, where uh, they had done a precardial thump, which is a blow to the chest with a fist. So the orthopedic surgeon had struck my chest. And when he struck it um, the first time, I did not uh, resuscitate. And up on the ceiling, um, for the first time, the being said something to me. And he, in this very calm voice, said, But if you go back, you'll still be in your marriage. What will you do? And then he showed me all of these film clips of all of the trauma that I was living through, all of these. I was in a truly abusive situation where the oh. person would always apologize afterwards and say of that he would never do it again. And then, you know, it would happen again. And I would try everything to everything from marriage, family counseling to a pastor of a church to, you know, begging, pleading, crying, everything. Nothing had ever changed his behaviors. And so... I evaluated all that up on the ceiling after the first precardial thump and after I saw those little film clips and I came to the realization that it wasn't him that needed to change, that it was actually me that needed to choose not to be in that situation any longer. Wow. And so I spoke to the being and I said, if you will let me go back, I promise you that I'll get strong enough to leave him. And the second I said that, the the doctor, the orthopedic surgeon, did the second precardial thump, and my eyes shut up on the ceiling, um, and I closed my eyes up there, and I opened them in my body, and his fist was ju had just hit my chest. And wow. I looked at him in the face, and I said him to the oxygen mask, what just happened? And he then, the nurse then said, don't talk, we need to stabilize you. And so 20 minutes later, when they took the oxygen mask off, I just downloaded what just happened. I was up on the ceiling. I could see and hear everything. What, right. was, going, what was going on? I saw the heart monitor flatlining. And the neurosurgeon who was present, he just went, oh, brother, and yes. walked out of the room. He ended up walking out of the room. So everybody else stayed and listened. And the orthopedic surgeon was very 
kind and he said what else did you see what did you hear and it took many years for him to finally tell me that my NDE changed his medical protocols because if I could come back down and accurately describe what happened during the resuscitation efforts so could someone else in the future and he better be careful of what he did that's right no obscene gestures you know nothing crude nothing <laughs> yes really you know like let's, right. let's give up on this girl you know <laughs> no no keep, yeah, right. keep working yeah. on me yeah right yeah. exactly oh my yeah so funny. it was very interesting i've had a, an amazing you know it was i validated it completely and i'm one of the few people who spoke about it immediately most people that are ndeers just literally don't say anything because they don't know what to say and they sometimes when they are get back in their body they're in some sort of intubation or they're having some other situation occur and so i wasn't i, I literally had only had um, um a local up at the back of my neck and they'd injected the dye and so i was perfectly normal and fine i wasn't having an anesthesia or anything else prior to the problem when they tipped the table the wrong way so i was completely alert when i got back into my body again and was able to clearly talk and and recount what had happened I think there's a phenomenon, too. Many people have had extraordinary experiences in a variety of categories. I think NDEs are the most common by far, Mm -hmm. but they tend not to talk about them. And I had two, one one when I was eight and one when I was 20. I didn't talk about them until I was in my early 40s. It's it's too personal. And you you know know people won't believe it, but you also know it was real. Um, That's you're still aware of that experience as if it almost just happened yesterday, right? Yes. When I'm talking about it, I can literally shut my eyes and look down from the ceiling and see where the people were in the room and see where the heart monitor was brought in and set on a shelf right next to my body. And, you know, the oxygen cart was on the, cart was on the other side of, of the table that I was laying on. I can see the whole room when I shut my eyes. It's the clearest memory that I have in my entire life. That's another, uh, and and I just want everyone listening to understand, you may have had or you may have an extraordinary experience. Um, It doesn't have to be just like hers. I'll talk about mine at some point. It doesn't have to be just like mine. But one of the characteristics of them is it still feels years later as if it had only just happened. Yes, correct. they're they're eternal. They they have a different kind of categorization in our memories, and that's a very important distinction. What made you finally say, okay, twenty years later, you said, um, all right, I'm going to start to talk about this. What ha- what happened? What made that begin to happen? Yeah, what happened was that um, a friend of mine who's a nurse was having her her mom was impending dying. So her mom, she was going through this grief of her mom's impending death. And all of a sudden, I realized that my story of what had happened to me might help her with her understanding of death. And so I, I said, may I tell you something that happened to me a long time ago? And when I told her the whole story, she said, oh, my God, Barbara, I'm in the area where people are in cardiac arrest at the hospital. And what you're talking about is exactly what would have happened in the situation. And she said, Barbara, you've had a near-death experience. And I said, a what? Yeah, <laughs> right. I never heard of it. And I still hadn't, you know, said, I don't watch TV. And I'm just, I'm, I, I try to help in my community, but I really... Um, I'm not, I'm not a person who, you know, reads the newspapers and stuff like that. I kind of disconnected with that a long time ago. And so, um, she was the one who gave me the word on it. So of course the internet had popped up and I, my husband remembers that for three days, I just sat there on the internet and just researched NDEs. It was, you know, a, a good number of, I think it was actually 13 years later. I think my daughter was 13 when that happened. And so it took me a couple of years to actually feel like I could, um, you know, talk with anybody else about it after I kind of investigated it. Yes. And then I connected with the Near-Death Experience Research Foundation, which is Dr. Jeffrey Long, and that's N-D-E-R-F dot org. And I, you know, ended up writing up my near-death experience very briefly and posting it on his site and answering the questions that he posts to each experiencer. There are a set number of questions, and he ended up doing research on near-death experiences. He's a radiation oncologist, and... Um, 
he ended up writing the book called Evidence of the Afterlife from all of his information. It's a terrific book. We can recommend yes. it strongly. Yes. Yes, yes. He's a wonderful guy. So he talked to me about finally ended up calling me because the Discovery Channel wanted to um, reenact my near-death experience because 